Hi campers, this is Logan Gregg. We're at Country Camper and I'm joined here today by Ethan Winkler, our service expert. Behind us is the nation's number one fifth wheel, a grand design reflection. So for our veteran campers, we're gonna take you through some of the features and benefits and this is gonna be a refresher for you. And for our new to the RV lifestyle campers, we're gonna take you through the componentry of a grand design reflection and show you how the general systems operate. And that's the great thing of having Ethan here today. So let's get right into it, Ethan. Obviously, this is a fifth wheel. How is this different than a travel trailer? Uh, so the biggest thing with this, or we should go over the similarities first, is going to be your breakaway cable right here. So it's going to be on this red lanyard right here that either way, whether you're towing a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, it's going to hook to some point on the truck. So just in case trailer truck come apart, this pin will pull out. It'll engage the brakes and allow that trailer to kind of slow down with the truck. The other similarity is going to be your seven way, which is going to run your lights and your brakes. So same thing on a travel trailer. It's going to do uh, your charge line, your brakes and your uh, running lights. And then obviously, Ethan, up here, we've got our, you know, fifth wheel connection point. So this is where you would see, you know, the truck connects in the back of the bed. Obviously, there's different setups out there depending on what your tow setup is. The biggest thing is making sure that when you're picking out your dream reflection, you are choosing a um, not only something that fits within your uh, tow capacity, but also with your pin weight. So um, I'll let you get into pin weight versus um, yeah. So weight. the the technical aspects of it. So if you ever are in the market for an RV, whether it's a travel trailer or fifth wheel, you may find that when you're looking at the specs of your current vehicle, or if you're in the market for a new tow vehicle, you'll find that if you're doing a fifth wheel. Um, trailer, your tow cap will be a little bit higher than what, say, a bumper pull for a travel trailer will be only because of the payload of the truck. Um, and then the other difference is going to be that this is going right over that rear axle. Mm -hmm. So the truck's going to be able to take more weight as opposed to hanging off the very back of that truck and kind of straining the truck as a whole. So as far as towing goes, a fifth wheel is uh, an easier and uh, you get more out of it as far as your maneuvering and uh, kind of compatibility with tow vehicles. So really a dream when you're trying to back into your campsite. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. It's going to turn a lot faster with this than opposed to a uh, travel trailer. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking us through that. And looking at this 310, we're looking at probably a three-quarter ton or a one ton. Let's get into the specs though, okay? So this is the right camper. We've, we've made sure that it fits our truck. Let's get into some of these features on this Grand Design Reflection that are going to come standard uh, that, that people are really going to want to know about on their campsite. Yeah, so right off the bat, if you pull your truck away, you'll be able to access your front storage compartment right here. Uh, you do have room for storage, but just be mindful what you're throwing in here only because you do have your landing leg motors, your leveling controller, and all your 12 volt wire, uh, wiring over here. I like to kind of recommend uh, folks throw their sewer hoses in here because it's technically sealed off from the inside of the trailer. So it's uh, easier to kind of let it get dirty and uh, so on and so forth. You do have um, an access light here to allow yourself to see at night. It is prepped for solar. So if you do take that route, the trailer does have that solar prep up there. Yeah, and that's a really nice feature on the solar prep. Obviously, a lot of Grand Design customers we know are going off the grid uh, with everything that's going on in the world. They want to get uh, further away from people. So having things like your universal solar prep on this gives you that capacity. So if you are, you know, you need that more power reserve. Yeah, right? absolutely. So. And the only thing with that is if you do take that solar route, you may find yourself doing a bigger battery bank. So that's another uh, great um, compartment here for that so you can do a bigger bank right so we've seen people go out to as many as say six batteries in this particular area here and the nice thing is is that you've got the storage capacity everything's wired up from grand design um, but it's great that you you made that earlier point about being careful about what you are putting in here because i feel like so many times in in this industry people just are piling in their in their items excited to get out there on the on the uh, camping adventures but they're not thinking about what they could potentially do to this huge coach that they just invested a lot of money in. Uh, yeah, and you just kind of hit it right on that. So if you throw a chair or anything in there and you knock one of those wires loose off that controller, it's possible that we'll get a phone call of a customer saying that they're level and says it's not, uh, not working correctly. Sure. So, so speaking of, of leveling system, take me through that. I see a, a button up there and then I also see what kind of looks like a vent. Can you talk to me about this? So uh, we'll start with the vent here. This is just your battery vent. So uh, charging batteries do produce a, um, a gas. So they're always going to need to be one sealed from the inside of the trailer and also vented. So if you do add that bank, make sure that uh, any of those extra batteries falls into being vented. Okay. Um, 
this touchpad up here is it's it's a, a um, Lippert controller, so it's great to have it up in the front near the hitch. So when you turn it on and you're either hooking up or unhooking from the truck, you're able to kind of see right where you need to be as far as your hitch height goes. And then once you're done, truck's moved away. All you really have to do with this four point system is just hit auto level. If you want to throw blocks down in the rear before uh, you hit that auto level, you certainly can, but it's just as simple as uh, a touch. Awesome. Well, let's go around to the side of the coach. I think there's some other exciting components when it comes to the leveling system and some other access that you have here. So, so the front storage compartments here on the off door side is going to be your wet bay, but you also have a 30 pound storage container right here. So 30 pounds of propane on this side. 30 pounds of propane on the other side of the trip. That's a lot of propane to camp with. Yep, so, and we've touched on it before, but you're really gonna fall into a routine of how much propane you use after so many camping trips of what you're using in the trailer and what time of the season. You're so camping. depending on what kind of camper you are, where you're going, your propane use for that, you know, getting out there on that first journey may drastically be different than someone else that's going out for their first journey. It's really how you're using your camper. All comes down to the end user. Awesome, okay. All right, well, let's get into this uh, pass-through storage here. So the first thing in the storage compartment right here, you do have a motion light. Uh, there's two settings on that, so you can constantly have it on or you can have it on the motion setting. So at night, if you're out here, you open the compartment doors, that's automatically gonna light up so that way you have your light and uh, you can visually see. This controller right here, uh, essentially you're gonna be able to link your phone up to it um, well, through a LCI app with Grand Design and you're gonna be able to open your slides out here, run your leveling system, do your lights, your awning, it's essentially gonna do uh, everything that you can do on the inside, but out here as well. So that's what Grand Design's talking about with the Compass Connect system, the one system on the app, but then also you can have that redundant switching as they call it. So you have that old style switching if for any reason you don't have that mobile connectivity out there. Just a really convenient feature for when you're on the oh, campsite. Oh, absolutely, especially when it comes to setting up. So if you wanted to get your sewer hoses all out there or you had to run your slide out first, it's easier to do it from right here than running inside the trailer opening the slide and then running back around. So as far as setup purposes go and mobility of the trailer, um, yeah, that's huge. So another nice thing, so on this 310 RLS, which also is like the 337 RLS with a nice bed slide, 337, we all know it and love it. That's one of the most popular, but this 310 also would have the blue lights underneath. So if you're one of those campers that gets right to your site, they get set up with their, with their 50 amp cord immediately plugged in, they get their slides out. There is a nice blue light where you're not gonna, you're gonna be reminded not to hit your head. Yep. Uh, just, you know, different people set up their campers differently when they get to the campsite, but just a nice feature to rem uh, remember. Can you talk to me about this universal docking station? There's a lot to unpack here and it's it's pretty incredible system. Yeah, so well, first we'll touch on those blue lights you were talking about. That's gonna be this round switch right here. When you flip that up, those blue lights will uh, turn on and create kind of a, a an accent, but it's also gonna give you a, a whereabout of that fascia Safety for feature. the slide, exactly. Yeah. Um, above that is gonna be your water pump switch, so you are able to turn the water pump on from outside or inside the trailer. Just depends on what you're doing at that uh, given time and whether or not you're um, dry camping or if you're hooked up from a campground. Gotcha, okay. You have your outside shower right here, which is a quick connect style, so it's gonna be this blue slinky hose right here. It's gonna just go right into that center port so you push that back, that's going to go in just like that. And then you have your hot and your cold side of your faucet. So if you want to rinse anything off or um, wash your feet, etc., this is going to be the ticket right there. If you're at a beach or anything like that, this will be the go-to. And then unhooking will be to push in and, and then to take out. Right there, we dealt with some winterizing fluid. So that's exactly. another interesting part about this with this system is when you look here, you have, it looks to me, say I was new to camping, you've got your dry camping, power fill tank, and, and people may look at that and say, oh my gosh, what just happened? Can you talk a little bit about what that is and, and how that system was uh, pressurized? So the system was pressurized from being winterized. Right now we're still on the winterizing um, uh, look as far as the diagram goes. So right now this unit has been winterized. If you were to uh, do a de-winterize on it, you would just kind of look and see which style you want to use. So what, if you're going dry camping, you're going to switch it to these. If you're doing your city water connection right there, you're just going to mimic these valves and how the diagram kind of uh, shows you. So it's, it's really easy, but it may 
uh, take some time to kind of get it down pat. Sure, but it's so interesting when you're looking at this, that was obviously antifreeze fluid that came out when you disconnected this. That's not a big deal. That's the way that this system is actually designed because you've got, if you look at all of these different colors here, you have this in the perfect winterization uh, position so that you could actually go out and, and you know you don't need to worry about any issues with pipes or anything, um, water being in the lines. Um, another part, point going down here, speaking of water, you've got uh, your gray tanks, your black tanks. Now talk to me quickly about fresh water, gray water, and black water. What do those mean in the RV industry? So fresh water is gonna be your potable water. So that's uh, your, your fresh, your drinking water, what you're showering with dishes, et cetera, uh, gray water is gonna be what's coming essentially down your shower drains, your sink drains. Uh, it's pretty much just gonna be soapy water. Yep. And then your black water is gonna be strictly from the toilet. Um, yep. It's gonna be a straight shot down and that's just the human waste. Got it. So um, in looking at this, you obviously have your levers here. Now, can you talk to me a little bit about um, the use of gray tank versus uh, black tank when it comes to wh which one do I dump first? If I was here and I, I was at the end of my camping trip, can you explain to me when I do that and kind of how that works with this system here? This is so unique. I, I feel like so many first time campers um, wouldn't be aware that Grand Design is the one that revolutionized RVs and especially it came out in the reflection segment as one of the first, but putting all this componentry here so you're not running up and down the side right. of your coach. Uh, so the biggie here, there are two big things here. Your valves are all in one spot and your black tank flush is all in one spot. So when it comes to dumping or order of operation, um, depending on if you still have three days left in your camping trip, but your gray tanks are reading two thirds are full, go ahead and dump those. Uh, otherwise, if you're packing up, you're all done for the, the trip, go ahead and do your black tank first, hook up to your black tank flush, allow that fresh water to kind of feed through the bottom of the tank, keep it as clean as possible. And then once sure. you're essentially satisfied with uh, your black tank dumping, go ahead and pull your gray tanks. You can do them both at the same time and uh, kind of work with that soapy water to flush out your sewer hose and keep everything essentially as clean as possible. Got it, okay. So I know there's a lot we can talk about here, but we need to move on. There's so sure. many other great features, but uh, the last thing here is just this unobstructed pass-through. Obviously there's motion sensor lights, your battery disconnect on the other side. You can see even Grand Design's aluminum construction. So just amazing build quality shines through here, but let's keep moving on. What is this piece right here? So right here is gonna be the new uh, Dometic water heater. So. Uh, electric, gas, however you prefer, whether you're dry camping and you don't have uh, the 120 volt hookup and you, you have to uh, heat it off gas, you do have options here. Everything's gonna be switched from the inside of the coach uh, in order to operate this. Yep. You have your drain plug right here. So before you do- This has definitely been winterized. <laughs> yeah, so before you do the, uh, your uh, initial setup, make sure that drain plug goes in, make sure your valves are all squared away in the correct order. So that way, when you do hook up to water, you're putting water in that tank and it's gonna be safe to kind of fire up that heating element and get the heating process started. Awesome, so what's this right next to you? So with this being a fifth wheel, being prepped for a second AC, you will find that you have a 15 amp short cord right here. So chances are, uh, in order to utilize everything in this trailer, you will absolutely need to be hooked up to a uh, 50 amp circuit. Mm -hmm. You can step down to a 30 amp circuit and still run the trailers, AC, refrigerator, microwave. But if you, if you are uh, going that second AC route, 50 amps is going to be your ticket. And also going to allow you when you are plugged into a 50 amp service to allow you to run more things like your, you know, you can run your um, microwave, yep. you can run all your different electronics seamlessly um, compared to, you know, a 30 amp setup that you might see in more of a travel trailer. So yeah, and just the risk of overloading it if you are hooked up to a 30 amp. So the 50 amp is sure. a nice thing. Yeah. Well, one really exciting feature that I know Grand Design rolled out and our, uh, you know, Grand Design always looking for feedback from customers. Um, really important for us to talk about here. We overlook it. Sometimes we take these features for granted, but Grand Design rolled out the Goodyear Endurance tires on these reflections. So not only that, it's a, it, they, they have it paired with an aluminum uh, wheel uh, with nitro filled tires. So Ethan, obviously throwing a lot here at that, um, at you, but what does that mean when you're talking about aluminum wheels, nitro filled tires, and a Goodyear American made tire? Well, the biggie is the Goodyear right yep. there. It's a higher quality tire, so it's going to last longer. You're going to get more miles out of it. It's going to be a better ride for the trailer itself and a better ride for you guys in the, in the tow vehicle. Um, the nitrogen fill, it's just a, it's an easier way of uh, keeping an eye on your tire pressure. It's not going to deplete with the temperature uh, fluctuation and so it's more consistent exactly yeah you don't have to i mean you should still check it but it's not as much of a um 
risk factor with, say there was just air in there and it's getting really cold outside, you may see that the PSI and the tires are dropping a lot quicker. Than right, and we're dealing with fluctuations here going from 40 right. last night to, you know, up in the 60s today, um, or, or that's how, you know, usually this time of year you'll have those fluctuations. Also with the aluminum wheels, right, they're going to dissipate heat better, they're, um, they're lighter weight, so just a, a really nice system. Now, another great feature that Grand Design went with is they went with the CRE 3000 suspension system. So that was something that we were familiar with up in the Solitude lineup, right? The premier Grand Design line, while in the number one fifth wheel in, in America, um, Grand Designs introduced that CRE 3000. So not only do you have the best kind of tire and wheel setup, but now you have the top of the line suspension. So what does that mean for, for customers who are out there? They, you know, they've invested a lot, they wanna have uh, good towability. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's really just that, it's good towability. I mean, it's gonna be a, a smoother ride. You're gonna feel less from the trailer as if um, you had the cheaper tires, the, the cheaper axle system and the equalizer system. So with the way that this is gonna flex for you, it's gonna go over those bumps easier. The tires, obviously, like I said, are gonna last longer. So it's just gonna be a smoother ride from front to back. So probably happier customers that you're talking to from the service end. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's great. So let's uh, let's head down the coach. So um, some really great features that um, Reflection often have, and I think maybe they get overlooked or taken. Uh, you know, people just take them for granted at this point. But you've got what is that black piece up there? What is that black? So up? What does that do? That's the prep for the backup camera. So that's going to feed off the 12 volt power from your uh, marker lights up there, and then that system that you order or purchase is going to come with a display that's going to look like a GPS. That's going to go in the the dash of the truck and it's going to allow you while you're maneuvering backing up going forward down the road it's just going to allow you to see your surroundings so that way you could feel more comfortable about what you're doing um, as far as towing goes so you're ta so and is that that's something that customers have to purchase separately right it's not coming with the built-in camera right you're correct just the after. prep yeah you're yep. just gonna have the housing right there it's gonna have a quick connect plug in it so that way you can just pull the four screws out of there connect it themselves and it's nice, uh, nice and easy. So one thing that's really standing out to me as you're talking is you, you, we've started off obviously at the hitch. We've kind of worked our way down with the tires, the wheels, everything's come back to amazing towability. Sounds like having a backup camera prep and being able to put on a backup camera just adds to that ease of oh, towability yeah. when it comes to fifth wheel. A lot of first time campers may be intimidated, but come to find out from what you're saying from the service side, it's actually easier to tow a fifth wheel if you have the right safe setup, which Grand Design is providing you. Yeah, if you do it right, there's going to be no complaints. Awesome. Well, another thing that I'm seeing here is a two inch receiver, uh, which means a lot of people want to bring, you know, some extra bikes and, and other cargo, maybe coolers off the back. So there is, you know, good weight capacity there um, for, for folks to take advantage of, as well as a four way. Yep. Um, obviously anything double towed, you got to make sure that you're, you know, you can talk more about yeah, that. Yeah, just but. keep in mind what the, what your, the state you're traveling through, keep in mind what their regulations are on that. You do have a 300 pound tongue weight capacity on that 3000 pound towing capacity. So there are options there to double tow, but again, you just got to keep in mind with what state you're going through and what their regulations are as far as double towing. And safety, safety, safety. Right. You know, so, uh, and then another feature, a lot of people overlook it, but a ladder. That yep. means a couple things usually, right? Walkable roof. It's, uh, you know, good build quality off this back, you know? Um, so talk to me about that. The, well, the biggest thing as far on the service side goes, it's easier for uh, the end user, the customer to walk on their roof do their walk arounds, inspect their sealant, um, which they should be doing on a regular basis. This just makes it a lot easier because you can do it before you go to the campground, before you leave the campground. You just wanna make sure that if you're under a bunch of trees and no those sticks have fallen, mm -hmm. no branches, um, make sure that the roof hasn't been cut anywhere, really just kind of do your normal um, maintenance as far as walking on the roof. You can buy products that are good to condition the roof, yep. clean the roof, so do that annually as far as uh, treating the rubber make sure you scrub it real good and then put that UV protectant on it. Sure, and so, and the UV protectant is gonna make sure there's no cracking and you're gonna get longer life. Now, Grand Design has a fantastic warranty when it comes to the roof membrane, but you still, as the consumer, it's no different than a car, right? You gotta take care of it, you have to do maintenance the right Maintenance is thing. maintenance. Exactly, <laughs> I love it, it's, yeah. it's so true. So, um, but looking at that, really nice, um, and then, um, you know, making sure that all the debris is off your roof. It seems like you're really hitting on that, making sure, same thing with the slides, right? You know, you need to make sure yep. that that's being taken care of. Yeah, biggest thing is, is maintenance on that, so. Gotcha. And then never when wet and always make sure that you're wearing protective gear when you are going up on your roof. Yes, safety first as yeah. well, of course. So coming around the side, there's obviously a, a new feature here. It stands out to me, we see these units all the time, but maybe this, this might be overlooked. 
is this solid stance um, step here. So many people are used to seeing these fold out more ride steps, right? Well, Grand Design giving their customers a kind of a choice, they, they've had these um, standard aluminum steps, right? We've seen these on campers forever. Oh, yeah. um, they went to aluminum, and, and, but then they've added the solid stance. So Ethan, can you show me and talk to me about what Grand Design's done here? This is kind of revolutionary. Yeah, so the, the best thing about this, and over the years I've always guided customers to uh, kind of put a block under these fold out steps so that way when they do initially step on the first step, the trailer's not rocking, it's not flexing, um, so on and so forth. So with cut these, that engine. it kind of eliminates the need for that you tell block. Them to cut it has that adjustable, right uh, adjustable settings loud. on it. The lock pin's right here to adjust however the, the ground is pitched. And you can do individual adjustments on the leg if there happens to be a rock right where that needs to go. So that will make contact with the ground and prevent the trailer from rocking. So just overall stability, right? Absolutely, yeah. Right. All right, awesome. That's a that's a great feature from Grand Design. Looking out here, just a, a couple of more things to touch on, right? So with this, you've actually got um, multiple points of contact, but one of those is the is the you know you hit it up there, but the four point yep. you know uh, electric leveling system. So yeah, and that's, it's dependent on the size of the fifth wheel. You'll either see a four point or a six point on the bigger ones, but however many points you can get contacted to the ground, your stability is just going to be. So better. stability with the stairs, stability with the leveling system and the tires, Grand Design is just killing it when it comes to the camping experience. Um, obviously looking underneath the awning here, power awning, nice big yep. awning, um, and then you've also got some plugs and whatnot if you are gonna bring that kind of outside experience here. Yeah, so with the radio that's inside, you have your outside speakers right here. Those are gonna be on a zone system, so you can either split it so everything's on or you can do it so just outside's on, inside's on, however you wanna do it. Down here you have a cable jack and a 120 volt outlet right here. If you do want to throw a TV or something out here, however you guys would like to essentially set that up. And that's the cool thing. We see campers do that all the time. They set up, you know, people say, oh, this doesn't uh, have an outside kitchen on this particular model. Well, actually that's kind of great because then you can fashion your own. With right. that big pass through, you can bring your own grill, you can bring your own um, refrigerator, you can do your own setup with a TV, you can bring any game or any any type of entertainment to you out here. So it's really nice. That's the way to do it. Yeah, so let's head inside. Uh, there's so much to, to look at here. Um, notice that blue lighting too, just another kind of safety feature, but we just walked in here, Ethan. We've got the slide in. Obviously this is a slide model here. Um, what's the next step? Uh, so the next step, water's hooked up, sewer's hooked up, uh, uh, the unit's level. Now you can come in here and you can really, you can open everything up and get uh, ready to do what you got to do in yep. order to get ready to camp. So first thing that I would do is open your slide up. So you have two slide switches right here. One's for the bedroom and one is for right here, the main kitchen and living room slide. So hitting slide one out, that's going to bring the slide out uh, as a whole. And so this is, again, a part of that Compass Connect system that you were talking about earlier, yep. right? Operation from an app, if you are able to get that mobile connectivity, and then you're also, you have that redundant switching, so if you do prefer the old, older style switching, you still have it. Yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, sometimes it's easier when you're dealing with switches like this as opposed to the touch screen, so uh, having the options there is, is, is incredible. That's awesome. So what else can we unpack from this uh, system? It, it seems like there's a lot there. So it's going to be your two slide outs um, and then your power awning. So here, keep in mind with that power awning, any any rain, any wind, you really want to have it in, not out. It's there for sun and shade to essentially just protect you from the sun's rays. So you're saying with an awning, you should not leave it out. When you leave your campsite for any reason, maybe you're going to go on a scenic drive or you're going to go view something else, uh, whatever it may be, don't leave your awning out. Absolutely, yeah. Bring that in. If no one's going to be around to watch it, it's... It's tough to get the call from a customer that says that their awning was left out and now it's all twisted and they can't get it to, to come back in. So if you're not here, bring it in. If you're enjoying the sun and you want it out, by all means. And these are well-built awnings, but it's mother nature and yep. she'll take over sometimes. So. Unpredictable. Yeah. So, um, so talk to me about some of the other features when it comes to monitoring. We've talked about water systems. We've talked about the tanks. We saw the universal docking station. Talk to me about how we can check our water and all these other things from these systems. Yeah, so your um, touchpad monitor system right here, you're going to have your uh, five touch buttons. So you're going to have your battery, your fresh tank, black tank, and your grays. So you have two grays in here. You're going to have your kitchen galley, which is going to have its own gray, and then your bathroom 
shower and sink is going to be its own uh, gray. But that'll vary depending on the reflection model, right? right? Yeah, okay. every model will be different. Um, and it's going to read on these four LEDs. So if I was to hit the black tank right now, it shows empty. And again, when it comes to dumping that black tank, two thirds are full because you really want that fresh water to, um, or not necessarily fresh water, but you want that water to help push everything out. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So as we move into the into the coach, there's some things that are kind of it's kind of sensory overload with the amount that Grand Designs packed into this unit, very tastefully so. But what is this down here? Uh, so that's going to be your LP and carbon detector. So it's a mix. Um, safety device it's hardwired to the 12 volt system in the trailer so if your battery disconnect is left on that will kill your battery okay. but it's strictly there for safety it's almost it's the same category as say the smoke detector that's up on the ceiling gotcha okay so i see this awesome big screen tv uh, you know grand design comes packed with electronics talk to me a little bit about the operation of this if i'm boondocking do i have the opportunity if not can i use a generator how can i utilize my electronics so it's it's not a 12 volt tv so if you are boondocking you'll have to look into either an inverter setup or a generator setup if you are not able to run that 50 amp cord and plug that into an outlet. Um, so that's gonna be the only way to run this TV is essentially 120 volts. Sure, but you got options is the point. Oh, Whether you're boondocking, you bring a generator or you're, or you're plugged in, you still have options to utilize your electronics. Now, one interesting thing that uh, Grand Design um, is putting into the living rooms of these reflections is the RV airflow system. So this is something that I'm, I'm a little familiar with. So when it comes to this, you can actually notice that these, these vents are closed here. So what Grand Design did, obviously we know they have one of the most efficient and highest uh, uh, producing AC systems in the industry. Uh, they have the kind of the revolutionary racetrack. It's much, yep. much more uh, efficient. But what Grand Design was finding in, in how they, they always want to get better, they always want to improve their systems, they found that there was a little bit of uh, maybe stagnant air between those actual ducting and then where the um, AC insert is. So they've actually installed this RV airflow system, which fills that space and actually pumps the air down into the coach. So it's a more efficient system, uh, really exciting. No, uh, nobody else is using it as far as I know. Um, but one thing about that is from the user side, you have to keep these closed or else it, it doesn't allow the system to work. But the neat thing about it, and we've been looking at the numbers, we're still waiting before I wanna put the actual data out there, but it is it cools down this area so much faster, which is really important. So talk to me a little bit about uh, temperatures and how, what we can expect from ACs, refrigerators, and all those components when you start getting into different climates. Uh, so as far as the climates go, um, depending even on the elevation, the refrigerators may run different, but as far as cooling down uh, faster with the AC running, throw your shades down, um, start early in the morning. This Having this system in here is gonna be huge if you're getting a late jump uh, in the day and you're somewhere hot and you need to fire up that AC to get it to cool down, that uh, system that they're putting in there is going to be a huge factor. You should still obviously do everything you can to um, keep the trailer uh, from the sun when it comes to cooling. So keep the door closed, shades down, just help the trailer cool. Um, in order for it to reach your set temp. Because I think that's important for first time RVers to understand is that as much as with Grand Design's almost home build quality that they bring, there are there are some limitations, but that's not from the manufacturer. They're doing everything that they can to make these highly efficient, uh, just great overall units. Um, but there are some limitations, right? We're dealing with mother nature, you're out sure. in climate, it's a little bit different, uh, different power sources. So it sounds like you've got some great tips there to, to try to keep this cooler. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so as we move through this coach too, a couple other things stand out. Moving back over here, you've got this um, oven and stovetop. Talk to me about this. What's the operation? Is this run from propane? What, talk to me about it. So the operation of the, the heating and cooking is strictly uh, propane. There is 12 volts involved here with your um, lighting system that's in the oven and on the top. So you'll have your oven light. These are great for like a night light. So if you have anyone staying down here in the living room area or the kitchen area, this will be a great source for them to um, move around safely at night. You have three top burners right here. So these three uh, burner knobs are gonna control these. You have your igniter right here, and then you have your oven knob right here. So lighting the oven, you'd go to your flame. Lighting your burners, you'd go to the flame as well. But when it comes to the oven, you have to make sure that that knob is compressed and then it's safe to start running your igniter and watching for the back pilot to essentially light. And then you know you can set your temp to 
whatever you need to cook at. Got it. So if I was looking to cook uh, here and I wanted to say I wanted some tea or something like yeah. that, or I need to boil some pasta, uh, is there a burner that I should prefer over another or? The, the most BTUs you're going to get is going to come out of that center burner. So if you're doing the tea, doing a, a big pot of something, always utilize that center burner because you're going to get the most heating out of that one. Awesome. Um, in looking at this area, Ethan, what else did I, I mean, the microwave, get a lot of questions about this from uh, customers. Let's say that you are plugged in, mm -hmm. you're not boondocking, you're not using the generator setup. Um, what do I have to think about when I'm using my microwave and all the other electronics that they're packing into these grand designs? Uh, well, as long as you are hooked up to the 50 amp circuit for this, mm -hmm. you don't have to think too much about it um, as far as worrying about over overloading the system sure um, the the trailer is built to handle anything that they obviously have put in it just keep in mind what you're hooked up to because if you are stepping it down yeah you're gonna limit yourself to both ACs and are when, running when you're talking about stepping it down you mean kind of piggy you know doing that pigtail yep. where you're going from a 50 amp into a different yep, um, to a 30 and yep. then a 15 etc and yeah. the 15 being if you were plugged into a house yep Okay, so there is that capability where you could do that if you know some people are using these in their driveways and whatnot, but at that point, they would potentially be limiting their use of that. That's a service question I think that comes up. All the and, time. And so just something to hit on. The, the capacities here, if you have the right connectivity. Yep. Um, and then uh, looking over here, Ethan, obviously a refrigerator is, uh, is core to camping and, and keeping items cold. Yeah, so, so talk to me about this uh, dual door setup that Grand Design has. With this refrigerator, obviously when it comes to camping, having four doors, two top, two bottom, you're gonna have more space uh, to use than th most trailers. Sure. Um, so this is a huge uh, bonus to operate it. You're just gonna hit the on and off button once it's automatically going to go to its auto mode, so it's going to sense whether we're hooked up to shore power or if we're feeding off the battery and it's going to want to kick over to propane. Um, your modes right here, you'll be able to adjust uh, auto or if you want to go to your strictly LP, even if you're hooked up to shore power and you want it to run on gas because gas will make this cool a little faster and maybe even run a little more efficiently. So that question comes up a lot is how do I get this... It, what should the expectation be for a customer? They they come to, to you know the dealership, they pick up their camper, they want to go camping right away, but say maybe their camper was prepped, it's already been gone through, maybe they, they told us for some reason don't put on the, the um, refrigerator here, uh, and it's and it's basically warm. What can the expectation be on the cooling side of things? Uh, well, patience is key with that. Having the trailer as level as possible when it comes to cooling on this is also a big part of it. Um, it's like almost a full day uh, of cooling that the manufacturer will want you to allow. Yeah. Um, chances are it may not take that long, but patience when it comes to RV fridges and cooling is huge. The way you pack it, just, uh, p uh, pack from the bottom to the top so that way those fins can breathe. Um, airflow inside that fridge is huge when it comes to cooling. And those fins in there, they have to stay clean. Is that correct? You got to make sure that you're, you're keeping those. Yeah, it's kind of part of your maintenance. Yeah, don't allow them to build up with anything. If uh, things get splashed around in there and they start to build up or uh, cake up with uh, debris from the, there, it's going to really affect the way it's cooling. Got it. Okay. So, and then another thing that's important is having a, a level camper too. Yep. So, uh, but definitely, I mean, obviously Grand Design's using some of the best uh, when it comes to refrigerators, uh, but there is just, it's a little bit different than a, you know, a refrigerator that you'd find in your home than in an RV. It's yep. just a little bit different. So it's good to, to think about that. Uh, another thing that you mentioned, you were mentioning LP, you were mentioning that sure power. Are you telling, uh, you know, people out there that basically if you're at a campground, you're plugged in and for some reason the, the campground gets into overload mode, it turns off, there's an LP um, switchover? Yeah, so as long as your battery is engaged, so that battery disconnect is on, and you're sleeping in the middle of the night, campground loses power, the fridge is going to know that, oh, 120 volts is gone, so it's automatically going to want to kick over to gas and fire up the burner. So that That's way awesome, so cooling. just less worrying. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. So Ethan, another thing that stands out to me is this fan right here. And I noticed that there's an umbrella out there. What does that mean? Yeah, so that's just telling you that that vent right there is a uh, moisture sensor. So say you forget it's open, you leave the campsite for a little bit, you get a little bit of rain, the moisture is going to hit that sensor. It's automatically going to close. Now the controller for that is right here. So it's power opening. You can also put vent covers over there. You can put vent covers over the bedroom, the bathroom. Max Air makes great covers to put over that so you can leave them open without needing to worry about it. And then the benefit of that is also 
getting that airflow through the trailer and just kind of keeping fresh air in and out. Got it. So when you're talking about this fan system here, obviously it's great from the factory, but if you do uh, match that up with say Max Air makes some vent covers, you were saying it has some benefits, but why is that? Is it moisture? Is it, what is it? What well, does it protect the, from? The, the vents won't be as so much as the moisture in the air. With the rain, it's really going to help. So that way you can keep those vents open. Uh, rain or shine, it's going to I'll just allow that airflow to continue in and out of the trailer and keep it as fresh as possible in here. Awesome. All right. Well, great. Well, I definitely have some questions heading up into the next area sure. of the coach. So as we head up here, um, obviously you've got the, the bathroom, um, which Grand Design knocks out of the park, but I've got some questions when it comes to, you know, using an RV bathroom um, to anything else. How is it different using an RV toilet and an RV water system? Uh, so the biggest thing about the RV water system, whether it's fresh or sewer, is going to be the the toilet and yep. the operation and, and how you use it so it's a foot pedal flush so in order to flush everything that's in the bowl out is you would push it down all the way and it's going to allow everything to fall down into the tank but there's two biggies with that you need to make sure you use the right rv toilet paper mm -hmm. and keep up with the uh, the holding tank chemicals because uh if you don't you may find that the tank is smelling more the sensors aren't reading right and um there's just a, a build up of kind of debris on the side walls of the tank. So right toilet paper and holding tank chemicals. So when you say right toilet paper, you mean RV grade toilet paper. Obviously they make two ply, they make good stuff, but it's, it has almost a different uh, chemical property to it than say. Yeah, as soon as it hits water, it's gonna start breaking down. So that way when it comes time to dump in that tank, everything's gonna flow out. You'll have no clogs or anything to worry about. Gotcha, and then pa pairing that with the RV chemical. Now how much, you know, I see these big gallons sometimes of like blue chemical. How much do I use? Uh, how, how often do I have to use that? So every every tank, uh, or I should say, every time you dump the tank, you should think about adding a little bit of water and take whatever chemicals you have, make sure you read the directions for it. It's gonna tell you um, whether it's a powder or a liquid. It's gonna kind of guide you with how much to put into each holding tank. Got it, and then going back to ventilation, you had mentioned some fans in different places. Uh, what do they have in the bathroom here? Yeah, so you have another 14 by 14 uh, vent right here. So it has a powered fan in it. It's a manual crank this time. So again, uh, vent covers are a great idea to put over that. And it has a switch right here, which is going to act as your exhaust fan while you're using the bathroom, whether you're showering or running hot water, et cetera. So obviously ventilation is key with RVs. Well, that's, uh, I've learned a lot from you here on this component, but I think there's some features up there in the bedroom to definitely yeah. talk about. So as we kind of roll into here, um, you know, for standard function, um, obviously, uh, again, what do we have here? <laughs> yeah, so again, another vent, which is great. So if you don't utilize this um, second AC prep, which is, so you have 12 volts up here, you have 120 volts up there, it's ready for a second AC. Uh, if you don't want to use that just yet, you have the option to throw uh, like a fantastic fan or ultra breeze fan in there um, to allow more airflow in through the trailer, throw that vent cover over there uh, and just help the trailer breathe. So Grand Design customers will often reach out to us and say, hey, I want to make some improvements. I love my coach. I want to customize it a little bit more. You mentioned, you know, being uh, wired and framed for, for another AC. Yeah. Obviously, you know, there's some, some work associated with that and you've been on the front lines before. You are factory trained. So talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, what that process looks like if someone does want to go with a second AC option. So if you go with the second AC option in, uh, say, this reflection right here, this vent is going to get removed. This garnish is gone. Uh, the vent, all the sealant will come up uh, as much as possible. That second AC will get placed down over this cutout right here, mm -hmm. and then all your wiring will be back behind the garnish. You have your thermostat location, which will be right here. So it'll be essentially like a second zone. So you'll have your thermostat for the living area out there, and then your bedroom one here. Now, all the vents are um, all as one, yep. so they're all connected. So you will be able to technically run this AC to feed down there or vice versa. Got it, so a lot of versatility if someone wants to explore that option, that's yeah. great. So I'm also seeing something here, it comes up all the time. As much as we love the outdoors and love to be out there, uh, you know, uh, we do love entertainment and, and being able to watch, you know, our shows or, or you know, favorite uh, sports teams. So looking at this TV backer location, I see these stickers in, in reflections. What does this mean? Does this mean I can put whatever TV I want right here? What do I have to do? Uh, no, I mean, obviously at the, at the end of the day, only such a big TV will fit right here, but you want to make sure that whatever um, 
TV mount you're putting here will fit the backer location. If you have any questions on that, you can contact your dealer. Um, but just be careful with the weight and the size. You don't want to overdo it for the location, especially if you're uh, almost daily towing this trailer down the road. If you put too heavy of a TV or too big of a TV, you may find that uh, it falls out. Gotcha. And so this is really interesting um, with this because, you know, so many people worry about cords um, and, and, you know, a clean look. Grand Design obviously has a very clean presentation and I love what they did here. It looks like they kind of integrated the full system here if you do want to add that, that. Yeah, you have your 120 volt outlet right there. Then you have your cable and satellite hookup right there. So even if you wanted to do like a portable satellite just to the bedroom, you have that option from the outside to in here. So there's plenty of cable options and entertainment options uh, for this trailer. Gotcha. And so one other really nice thing. So obviously Grand Design and Reflection Lovers, Solitude Lovers, they know about the beautiful front caps that uh, not only on the exterior, but on the interior have been maximized for the ultimate storage. I call them, I joke, I usually will stand in them and call them the walk-in mm. closets. I happen to fit. Um, but within that is the washer and dryer prep. So can you talk about that? Because we get those questions so often of, can I install washer and dryer? What does it look like? What does the unit have to do? What's the process? I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, but can you talk to us about it? Because I know that you've personally installed these before. Oh yeah, absolutely, a number of times. So if we come over here to the closet, like you said, it technically could be considered a walk-in closet, but you have your washer and dryer prep on both sides. Now this reflection will not take a stackable, so you could either do a combo or two individual pieces. What does that mean? What does a combo mean? So a combo is going to wash and then dry the uh, clothing all in one swift motion. If you do a individual piece, you'll have a dryer on one side and then your washer on the other. Now the, the off door side of the trailer is going to be prepped with your water and then you have vent stickers on both sides if you do get that combo on where a safe spot to drill your vent hole is. Got it, because it's gotta be vented. You have to make sure that the system's installed correctly. Definitely recommend a dealer on, on things like that. Absolutely. Um, but it is an option, correct? Yep. Awesome. Well, um, when I look through here, is there anything else that I missed? I mean, there's so much that we can unpack. Um, there is actually one other thing that I would like to mention is we get this question all the time from our Grand Design customers. Um, they'll see a, a unit on a dealer's lot um, that has maybe a queen bed. Now we've worked with Grand Design in these situations and they have also told us that, you know, you can install that king bed. Um, it obviously changes these configurations. Yeah, um, you're gonna lose your nightstands to, to, to take that king, but it's all gonna come down to a personal preference on what they but want. But definitely the versatility in yep. Grand Design, again, not just forcing you into a queen or forcing you into a king, depending on your camping needs, you have the options when it yep. comes to a Grand Design reflection. They make it easier with options like that. So, I mean, the solar options, the AC options, your bed options, TV options, there's plenty of options they give you. So that's awesome. With Grand Design, you know whether you're a full-time living uh, customer, you're a, a weekend warrior, or whatever kind of camping that you can take on, Grand Design Reflection is, is where it's at in the Absolutely, fifth wheel yeah. Awesome.